Good afternoon and welcome to the first episode of St. Rose Political Debate. Today I am joined by Andrew Zanacona and Matt Petrowski. Andrew is a member of the St. Rose Democrats Club here on campus as well as the St. Rose Political Club and Matt is a part of the Young Americans for Liberty Club. I'm Theodore Stabile. I am uh, representing SRTV as an unbiased, non-politically affiliated moderator. Today we'll be discussing the topic of Brexit. So I'll bring it over to Matt with his opening statement. <clears throat> Thank you, Ted. Uh, as they say, you always lose a few pounds after a breakup. Um, the Brexit was so important because the European Union is a big government, globalist establishment whose you know, regulations were not in the UK's best interest. Um, the other important note is that um, Brexit dealt with the issues of the, culture, the economic side to culture. Um, and that's a very difficult subject to talk about, but in my opinion, it was the ending subject that caused um, the UK to leave the EU. Last year's referendum shocked the world as the UK voted to leave the EU. Many people were in uh, tears of joy and tears of um, distress as there was a lot of economic uncertainty and social angst. Today we're going to debate the factors that led up to it, what the UK is going to do, and possibly the ramifications of the European Union itself. All right, thank you to both debaters. To start off with a broad question, what are the social and economic impacts of Brexit? Andrew, we'll start with you. Following the uh, referendum, there was an immediate economic effect. The NASDAQ, the, the pound, even the Dow Jones fell, sin dropped sig significantly. And there was a lot of social angst. A lot of people didn't know what to do. Uh, there was a lot of social angst, economic uncertainty. Uh, Investors, even trade deals, was in question. There's a lot of stuff that uh, really needs to be figured out in this time of great, um, well, it's a very historical, uh, historical event. Um, the vote was very, uh, very, um, very close. It was 48.1 to, um, or 9 to 50. It was like a 40, it was like a 49, 50, one basically, and a lot of people voted to leave because they thought they would stay. That's not a factor to that. But what, uh, to sum it up, there's a lot of economic uh, uncertainty and social angst. All right, uh, Matt, your view? Um, I think media has mostly been covering uh, Brexit as an economic issue. Um, you know, obviously, there were issues with the pound that needed to be solved. Um, and as a libertarian, I know that immigration is great for economies. Immigration brings in people that want to come and spend money, and uh, it really builds the workforce and uh, really helps out you know, countries that need that stuff. Um, great Britain especially has a, you know, a huge, tourist, uh, huge tourist activity. Um, the issue that was happening in the UK was that 500 people were coming in, roughly 500 people were coming in daily, and they didn't quite have enough to support that many people. And it, it deals with um, the economics of culture. And the important thing for the UK was to keep their culture a certain way to that it would keep bringing in you know, immigrants. And what was happening with the EU, if so many people were coming with, from Europe and stuff uh, to the UK and they couldn't sustain everybody. Um, and what was happening was they were losing aspects of, um, aspects of the UK that were bringing people there initially. Um, so for instance, if you take Germany and you take France and you switch the people around, everybody from Germany goes to France and everybody from France goes to Germany, Germany is not going to be Germany anymore. It's going to be France, and France is going to be Germany. Um, so if you have a ton of people coming in all at once to the UK, the UK is not going to have the same cultural you know, activity that it normally has, and it's going to become something else, which means that the things that are bringing people here, the immigration that's supposed to be helping their economy, is now not going to be the same. So 
in an ideal libertarian world, we wouldn't have these borders. We wouldn't have, we'd have people moving in and out constantly. Um, the issue is with the way they are right now, um, it was in the best interest of the UK to leave the European Union so that they could have um, more control over who was coming to their country or not. Um, and that's not to, you of course, bring that up and people say, oh, that's racist, you don't want people coming, you want to protect those things. Well, in, in some circumstances where you're talking about immigration coming in, you know, immigrants coming in, that's great, that's wonderful, we want people like that. Um, but dealing with it from an economic standpoint, it wasn't, wasn't helping them, and that's why Brexit was helpful to them. All right, Andrew, is there anything that your opponent has stated that you disagree with? Mm. Not particularly. All right. And Matthew, is there anything that your opponent stated in their argument that you disagree with? Um, no, not particularly. I get the, the social angst was a big thing, and that's partially because there was so much mixed media around it. it. In order for me to find out a lot of the information I did, I had to search through tons of just overly biased media. Um, uh, uh, John Oliver especially had a very one-sided view on everything. Um, and it, I think that was part of what was freaking people out and the reason the pound was dropping so low. But after Brexit and everything, the pound was the highest it had been in four months. Um, and I had just come back from London over spring break and things seemed to be fine there. All right, thank you both. Moving on to our next question. It seems that Article 50 is on its way to being approved this year, and the process will officially commence for Britain to leave the European Union. My question to you both is, what is Britain's best course of action after Article 50 is invoked? Matt, we'll start with you. Um, I think laying heavily on the things that I mentioned previously, you know, limiting the number of people that are coming into their country, because if you have as I said before, too many people coming in, they start to lose their cultural heritage and the things that made their values so specific to the United Kingdom. Um, but I think also upping their tourism. I think that they're getting a lot of, a lot more tourists coming there, and especially with the way the pound had dropped, you know, people could get half price tickets to London, half price um, hotels and to stay around, and it was very easy to get around there. Um, and I think that um, their best course of action would just be to continue in that, to continue profiting from that. All right, Andrew, your answer and any pot potential rebuttals to your opponent's answer. I think the uh, best course of action for the UK after invoking Article 50 is to focus on its uh, trade policy because the EU is, um, is a very uh, important uh, trading partner with the UK, as 50% of the UK's uh, exports are with trade with the U European Union. And one of the benefits of the being in the European single market is that you have all these other trade deals with these other countries that the UK would have to renegotiate with those countries that have the same benefits of being part of the European, European Union. All right, Matt, do you have anything else to add or any rebuttals to your opponent's argument? Um, just I would argue against trade deals. As a libertarian, you know, trade, uh, trade deals go against the free market, and I think that they're good for a while, and they're good for an amount of time that like, looks promising and can be promising for quite some time, but if they're happening with the use of force and with this monopolized system, um, they're gonna end up hurting somebody in the end, and I feel like that's possibly what happened. Well, when it comes down to trade deals, you really need to look at all aspects of the economy, of all people involved, and you have to look out for the worker, the, 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 common, uh, the common man, and instead of looking out for uh, the, the big corporations and 
uh, big CEOs. Mm -hmm. uh, so you have to work at a trade deal that benefits everybody and not just a few. And I'd agree. I think that, you know, monopolizing those trade deals, having a corporate or an organization that's in charge of all those, um, it's going to act in its, to serve itself. And unfortunately, with cronyism and corporatism, you have these large corporations that are getting that treatment because, you know, they pay taxes, they are, uh, they're helping out the larger government, and uh, it's, it's those sort of monopolies that are against free trade and they're against you know, capitalism, which actually lifts more people up out of poverty than any trade deal would. So the argument I'm trying to make is that the, the, the unions that are supposed to be preventing these monopolized governments or these monopolies in the economy, they're supposed to be protecting things, end up just turning into what they're supposed to protect against monopolies and people that are using force. All right, thank you both. Moving on to our next question, two of the biggest factors that uh, made it critical for Brexit to uh, succeed were the ideas of nationalism and sovereignty. How do you two feel about those two principles and do you believe that one or both of those principles were justified in regards to Britain leaving the EU? Why or why not? I'm going to start with Andrew this time. The, there was definitely uh, the uh, nationalist sentiment, sentiment with the Brexit vote, such as people such as uh, Nigel Farage and other um, Boris Johnson, who really led the movement of Brexit to really bring things back to uh, Britain. They didn't feel that uh, being in the U European Union was benefiting them, so they trying to they drove that narrative into getting support and I think a lot of people uh, jumped onto that because they felt that if we uh, take care of our own selves, uh, we can help our own, like the people, get out of their economic distress. And which uh, there's the, a lot of people in the UK are, uh, are at a specific uh, line of poverty. How uh, poverty is measured in the UK is based on if people make less than 60% of the annual media, median income, and that number has slightly rose over the past several years, and a lot of people have been trying to grasp whatever change they can, and the Brexit vote was their way out for that. Thank you. Uh, Matt, your argument and any potential rebuttals to your opponent's argument? Yeah, I'm not a fan of nationalism. Um, in some ways, it's glorified racism, which is unfortunately another way the media had been covering Brexit. If you look at the, uh, the UK Independence Party, um, it's full of people that are saying very off-color things and things that are inherently racist. Um, does that mean the movement itself was nationalist or, um, or anything like that. I don't personally think so. I think it was a movement based to simply benefit you know, the people in the UK. Um, and simply provide that liberation um, that was necessary. All right, uh, Andrew, do you have anything else you'd like to add or any rebuttals to your opponent's argument? Not particularly. All right, perfect. Uh, moving on to our final question. In the wake of Brexit, there is a sentiment that other countries might follow suit and potentially begin their own process to leave the EU, examples being Italy and France. What do you believe would be the ramifications of a weakened EU? I'm uh, going to start with Matt. Um, there would be economic collapse with uh, trade deals starting to fall apart and such. Um, it, w it would be an entire new, entirely new shift of power, um, much like the lead up with Brexit, these countries would lose tons of value on their currency um, and 
in retrospect to that, I think that people would start. It would it would build up their tourist aspects more. Their uh, their tourism profitability would increase, and I think that it would. Um, their ability to make their own decisions for what was best for their country um, would greatly improve, and uh, their people, first and foremost, would be looked after um, to make their own decisions. All right, thank you. Andrew, uh, your, your answer to the final question and any potential rebuttals to your opponent's argument. If um, as, as other countries uh, are still in the European Union and they see uh, uh, the UK leaving, it might cause a domino effect, but then it might not. Um, if the UK happens to be well off uh, after leaving the European Union, that's all well good for the UK. It may or may not convince other, country to, other countries to do so, but I think the... Uh, appropriate uh, approach is to see the results of this and reflect on, reflect on it and use that as an example for uh, future, uh, for future uh, events. All right, thank you very much. Uh, Matt, do you have any, anything else you'd like to add or any rebuttals to your opponent's argument? And I will let this be uh, the platform for the two of you to have any uh, closing statements. No, I think I uh, definitely agree with Andrew on most of that last statement. Um, we can only use this as learning experience for now, and we can, uh, you know, really see what you know the Europe, what these unions, what these uh, trade deals and such, how they affect co um, different countries, and base our decisions off of that. Um, I think uh, this what, what Brexit is will teach us is how to m legislate better policies that benefit everybody so that everyone can have that, their, their fair share, their equal opportunity, their sufficient uh, standards of living. And Brexit was a uh, backlash against this, um, this sense of abandonment by the people. So, um, which is similar to how Trump uh, won the election. A lot of people felt uh, very economically frustrated that they were in a rut, they couldn't get out. So voting this way was their only, the only way they saw that they could actually do something to make their, their lives better. Yeah, and just to um, wrap up on that point, um, you talk about uh, equal opportunity, which in my experience only comes from proper liberation. I think Brexit was the first step to that. But we'll see. All right. Thank you both very much again to both our debaters. I'm Theodore Stabile, and thank you very much for tuning in to this debate. We'll see you next time.